Travelers, it's been quite some time since I've seen you. Uh, you're back for another story, huh? Well, don't I have a tale for you? This tale happens within the outer, I'm within, well, a certain omniverse. Much different than yours, of course. <laughs> but anywho, let us begin. But first, the title of the story. This is the story of the, of the Jade Phantom from Emperor. Zuku Midoriya, also known as Deku. Or, this is what if Deku was a, was a ghost king, or was the king of ghosts, or, but more like god of ghosts. This is a Danny Phantom related video, yes. You heard me, Danny Phantom. For those who remember what Danny Phantom is, please put a put th exactly 13 ghost emojis in the comments. <clears throat> but anywho, let us begin. We start off many years ago. The age of the age far before anything else. Back, back when the caveman era had just started, there was a human born with exceptional abilities, while other people were born with brown or black hair. He was born with pure white hair and jade green eyes. Something very strange. While well, people had just started talking using grunts, sounds, and noises, he had already devised thir about 30 different languages. While well, people had just started banging rocks together, he had already started inventing temples. I started inventing temples and blacksmithing weapons. The other cavemen felt confused about this, about this guy. Instead of calling him a human or a caveman like them, they would think of him as some sort of God, and of some sort of higher being. And that's when the chieftain, the father of this boy, declared, said something in a grunt, which would be taken as an important title. Gah. 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 Gud is what he said. 
However, people would have obviously translated this to God later on. Later, while people had just begun inventing clothes, weapons, and homes, the boy had already invented things that they couldn't even comprehend. He had learned how to make things float. He learned how to enhance his body. Even how to use supernatural or inhuman abilities. During the creation of the wheel, he had all he already had made an invention which allowed him him to transport himself anywhere at the speed of sound. It was quite marvelous. No other caveman or early human could even compute with um, could even compete or understand what the boy was thinking or doing. No one could. They gave him the title of a god or higher being. They even back in the Egyptian days, they created him clothing which they called his divine robes. Then, back then, they called him him Lord of the Black Sands. I mean, Pharaoh of the Black Sands. In ancient Greece, they called him him he who walk, he who walks above even the gods, above even the primordials, above even chaos, is what they called him. <laughs> because you have to understand that during the age of Greece, he basically could fly, teleport manipulate weather, summon flames, and his technology it was far beyond anything and human the human mind or even animal minds could comprehend. The Romans had called him him the ultimate warrior. Whereas, in battle, the boy never lost a single fight, ever. No one could even comprehend his skills. No one could match them either. Statues, cities, and even... and and even stories were made in his name. What was the boy's name? Back in this age, it meant millions of things, referring to champion, lord, master, or of masters, king of kings. But in Japan, and for some reason, it translated to useless because of what one unhuman did. They called him a day. They, his name was Deku. However, he was so stupid and useless. They named him Deku. I mean, they changed the meaning of Deku, which was he who is above the sun and stars to useless. Below what could be possible to be below. Below even the farthest reaches of hell in terms of uselessness. However, one day the boy died of 
course, they expected this, because millions of other humans had died before. But not quite like this. When he died, it shook the entire world. It shook his entire religion. Everyone felt as if a god had literally left them, and the world crumbled into chaos. The same boy, a couple of seconds later, awoke within a black void, a null, vantablack void. However, he cre in that black void, he was able to create some, even something. He created a realm for souls, for the dead. Head to go. And so, it had begun. Rumors. Or uh, eventually, the, some of the beings of this realm of the dead found a way of es to escape the realm of the dead. These, of course, were hard, hardened, were hardened battle warriors, along with other criminals, elves and miscreants. They rose up from the from the ghostly, and from the realm of the undead, and of the realm of the dead, back to what was called the realm of the living. They terrorized the mortals, giving the undead a bad rap, and giving ghosts and the dead a bad rap. Hold on. Oh God, no. Hold on. Eventually, mortals grew weary and terrified of the undead. And Deku, the first dead, and the first in the realm of the dead. The being above all, as the realm of, realm of the living and the dead once called. And the realm of the living ones called him, and the dead called him. He, with due to all of the negativity that was thought of him and his people, Deku himself was given a terrifying, eyeing rap for being the most terrifying and evil being out there. A king of demons, nightmares, walking hells. However, if you met the guy, he was not like that at all. He was intelligent, of course, yes, and kind. And then, eventually, the reign of Christianity began. When Christianity, when the Christians died, popes and church, churchgoers, they thought of Deku as a false god. And one of the more powerful, and one of the more dominant of the popes, and bishops, a man named Parias, Pius Dark, and a man named Parias, eventually called Parias Dark, led a team of, led a, led a co-op de, a co-op de tot against, against the king of ghosts, or the god of ghosts, Deku. It was an extremely hard-fought battle. All except Parias had had been vanquished and killed. 
all of the ghosts who had revolved, all revolted against Deku. Parinus was on his last legs, battling, trying to win, when he used a sneaky move. He fled like a coward. This angered Deku. He wanted his subjects to find the traitor, and to find the last of the traitors and bring him to him. However, eventually, Deku heard of Parias getting stronger, trying to copy Deku's power. So Deku brought out two of his old relics from the living world which he created. The Ring of Rage, extremely powerful ring, which had the ability to absorb the wearer's rage and turn it into pure power, and the Crown of Flame, and the Crown of Fire, an extremely powerful, pure black crown, or helm, allowing the user to summon forth green flames, hotter than anything imaginable, hotter than a trillion suns, hotter than the Dekillion suns, hotter than the co very core of hell itself, and hotter than the very core of all hells combined. This, of course, was called Soul Flame, the Flames of the Dead. Eventually, Deku, Eku, and Parias met once more. Parias tried to attack Deku, but was, of course, under, I'm completely overwhelmed by Deku's sheer amount of force and power. However, Parias, being sneaky, jumped at and stole, and jumped at Deku and stole two and the two artifacts, which he created. Two of his powerful artifacts, the Crown of Fire and the Ring of Rage. Wearing them, he had, he was extremely powerful, to the point where all of his rage against Deku, against, against everything that he thought he stood for, against everything, anything else but him, built, built up within the ring, giving him almost limit power. However, one's rage can only last so long, and so Parias charged at Deku, who had, who still was fighting him with ease. This only fueled Parias's rage more and more and more. Till Parias can and put all of his rage into one single attack. An overpowered ability. An extremely powerful wave like an air pressure like ability. Which sent Deku flying. Parias and a few whom he had recruited built around Deku an indestructible sarcophagus. They then chained it at the bottom of the realm of the dead, now called the Ghost Zone. And they thought that was the end of the age of Deku.
However, a few worshippers, a few who had remembered his name, still prayed in silence that the king would rise up once more, that the god of the dead would rise up once more. Of course, due to the power of these prayers, and Deku's rage against Parias, against all who had betrayed him. Alive and dead or uh, uh, dead, alive or erased, fueled him to the point where his soul and his body had changed. His hair became longer. His body became more twisted. But, of course, over what seemed like in the ghost realm and the realm of the dead, trillions of quadrillions of the killions of eons, his body had, va his body had vanished leaving only what remained of his soul. A green orb surrounded by black flames and surrounded by black mist and flames. This was the very core of the dead itself. The very creation the very thing which allowed the ghost zone to cr be created. The heart of the, the heart of Deku himself. The soul of Deku. Of course, eventually, a half-human, half-ghost child came along changing the tides of everything, defeating Pariah Dark. I'm defeating Pariahs, who had changed his name to Pariah Dark. And many other newer ghosts who didn't even know of Deku's existence. Years later, Somehow, and years later, of course, about maybe a hundred years later, the, the very sarcophagus which cha enchained Deku's soul inside was somehow and was transported during a great clash of the half-human, half-ghost, and Pariah Dark. And not that. Due to a very large amount of quantum, and of, well, time displacement, temporal displacement, sorry, this caused the realms to, um, well, interlink with one another in a way they should never. And uh, by doing this, the sarcophagus was sent to the human world, albeit in a mountain. Hold on. Eventually, in a new year, which was called 2004, which was called 2047. A small team of, well, archaeologists was discovering Mount Fuji, or uh, yeah, Mount Fuji. Not discovering, exploring Mount Fuji. A volcanic mountain, which had for some strange reason suddenly become active. 
during a explosion test, however, they somehow rattled the chains of the indestructible sarcophagus. This, of course, waking up someone who, according to Parias and about 5,000 other er, priests and or popes, bishops and church go and church followers should never ever ever be awoken and then due to not being within the ghost zone anymore the chains which held and the sarcophagus itself started to be drained of all power as the only thing holding it together was the ener infinite supply of energy and with well all of the undead energy and souls within the ghost zone without that the sarcophagus began to break quite quickly It, about 10 minutes later, it exploded, creating an extremely large, large volcanic, volcanic eruption, killing the entire team of archaeologists and or explorers. But at the same time, freeing a being long thought to be forgotten. However, before anything could be done, a man who had been following the archaeologist team, he said a strange spell, teleporting the dormant soul and the pieces of the sarcophagus to the ghost realm. This person was one of the last followers of Parias, a, a descendant of one of the last followers of Parias, told to guard Mount Fuji and to never let the being that sleeps within escape. And so he teleported the, the dormant, unawakened soul, and the chain and the sarcophagus back to the ghost zone, using forbidden dark magics. However, about a month later. A student named Fumakage Tokoyami in a school called Ald called Aldera Junior High was testing out some dark rituals as he was a firm believer in the realm of spirits and the undead. Sorry? Hold on. <clears throat> and so, he had done a sort of ritual, which, if correct, would bring him to the realm of ghosts itself. However, while the ritual was being done, the dormant soul of Deku somehow had pulled strings to the exact location where Tokoyami would be brought, which was in front of the sarcophagus of Deku, which had been rebuilt due to the power within the ghost zone. And due to the energy of the ghost zone, Tokoyami entered 
and was then teleported directly into what could only be guessed as some sort of chamber surrounded by what could only be guessed as f millions of floating pillars and chains along with floating doors. Tokoyami saw and then saw the sarcophagus in front of him floating up in the air untouched looking like it was older than the earth itself Tokoyami of course touched it and due to well and due to the energy of the living from the living world world which Tokoyami's soul carried with it it had started a chain reaction almost instantly causing the energy of the dead and the energy of the living to merge creating an extremely large explosion somehow larger than and the explosion of Mount Fuji, awakening. I'm even waking up the dormant soul of Deku. Fumakage, who I'm Tokoyami, looked in front of him, himself to see what could only be guessed as a black and green orb which floated in the air. Tokoyami touched the orb, which, as it seemed, as it seemed if the orb itself was scanning Tokoyami, it created, it then created itself a humanoid form based off of the human DNA from Tokoyami, rejecting the bird, the raven or bird DNA which Tokoyami carried due to his quirk. <laughs> Suddenly, Tokoyami heard a voice saying, you living. As it sounded as if it was like a question, as Tokoyami then said, yes, I am living. I am living. I am alive. The humanoid shadowy shape then floated around Tokoyami in confusion and said, How get here? Tokoyami put two and two together and discovered and, of course, realized that the go that the orb, or ghostly shadowy shape was saying how did you get here tokoyami then said i used a ritual deku then said hmm need to go as Tokoyami looked at the shadowy shape and said, I or you? The shape then said, both. As it then and opened its palm, creating a large, large amount of green lightning, which encircled it around its palm. As it then crushed the energy, creating what could only be guessed as a sort of orb or giant shield or bubble around Tokoyami and Deku, which sent them both to the human world in Tokoyami's room. As Tokoyami then said, what's your name, almighty one? And what's your name, undead one? As Deku then said, Deku. Tokoyami then said, Why is your name useless? Toko 
Deku, of course, not getting it, said, Name Deku, not useless. As Tokoyami then said, Here in Japan, Deku means useless. Deku's two eyes then furled in anger, and then clenched in anger, as the shadowy form started shaking in rage. As he then said, What? Hold on. Sorry about that. Deku was enraged, as he then said, what? 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 As Tokoyami then said, I take it you don't like that? As Deku then said, Deku means one above all. He above sun and stars. Lord of the Black Sands, <clears throat> the ultimate warrior, and many, many, many more. <clears throat> as they then, as Tokoyami then said. Hmm. Well, not here. In Japan, Deku means useless, weak, without a purpose. The weakest, poss and most useless thing imaginable. Deku, of course, thought of this as Japan mocking him, thinking of him as weak. As Deku then said, Japan! Erase. And erase Japan. As Deku would then hold out his palm, which would start creating a black, a orb of very, of much larger black and green lightning. As Tokoyami then said, No, no, no. We're, Japan is not mocking you. Do not worry. It's because a human named Deku was, who was given the name of Deku, was very weak, useless, and dishonored, I believe, was your name. They changed the meaning from all of those to useless. Deku was pissed, royally pissed. As he then said, I understand. As Tokoyami then blinked and said, Your Japanese is getting better. As Deku would then say, Indeed it is. Tokoyami would then say, I have a feeling you aren't any old ghost. I aren't just any old ghost. As Deku would then say, You're right about that. I am the first ghost, creator of the undead realm, and of the realm of the dead. The first mortal ever to be thought as a, of as a god. I... I am Deku. I was born within, what I guess you would call the caveman area, an era, or the dawn of mankind. As Tokoyami would then say, Ah, so you're extremely smart, and so you're extremely intelligent and gifted even though you were born at the beginning of mankind. As Decker would then say, exactly. A flesh fleshling. As 
Tokugami would even say, I've been called many things, but fleshling is brand new. As Tokoyami would then say, so, do you have a human form? As Deku would then say, I have this form. As he would, as it would appear as if he was some sort of Egyptian god with the clothing which he wore. As Tokoyami then said, do you have a f no, that won't do. You'll be spotted out easily, thought of as a villain, or impersonating a hero. Deku was confused and said, hero? Villain? Tokoyami then began to explain everything about heroes and villains. This left Deku excited. He wanted to study and learn of all of the quirks attacks and skills which were possible within this new mysterious era. Deku. <clears throat> now, Tokoyami then said, so, could you perhaps create a new form? As Deku would then say, let's see. As Tokoyami would then show him like 50 different photos of what regular Japanese kids looked like. Deku had then decided to create a new form, one which he had not had before. His hair was dark green, his eyes were dark green, his skin was normal, and was well what could be considered white or peach. However, Deku looked behind him and saw a black and a white, a sort of shadowy form. A lot more humanoid though, and a lot more human looking and easier to see. This woman appeared to be wearing weather, I'm leather robes, I'm leather clothing, but it was blacked and turned, it was black and shadow like, same as the rest of her body. As Deku then said, Gah! Tokoyami then said, Deku, who is that? As he then said, Fumakage Tokoyami, meet my mother, Enko. I meet my mother. Her name is Enko. She was also gifted within the caveman times, but far less than me, but still quite intelligent. Whereas when people had just started making Ugg sewing, ugg sounds, and grunting noises. She had already invented herself leather clothing by killing various animals. She died of a disease, however, so she could not become as intelligent as me. However, I have managed to somewhat educate her within my mind. As well, she kind of, when she died, I hadn't cr I hadn't died yet, and there was no realm of the dead, leaving her to bind to the closest living thing near her, which was me. And so, she basically lives in my head and follows me around. As Deku would then say, Mother, can you please go in my head? The woman then quietly nodded and disappeared. As Deku then said, All right, Tokoyami, so please tell me else, what do humans of this, and what do fleshlings of this era do? As Tokoyami then said, Well, we go to something called school. Deku, being intrigued, said, what is school? 
which, of course, Tokoyami told him everything about school. Deku then said, ah, so it's a place where you go to try and get smarter, right? As Tokoyami said, that's basically the gist of it. As Deku then said, nice. So, in other words, it's a good place to, it is a good place to get educated. As Tokoyami then said, basically, Deku then said, hmm, very well, I shall go to this school of yours. After all, I also want to see if there's any ghosts within the human world, and they might, and some might be at this school of yours. Tokoyami then said, eh, I haven't really noticed anything, but if anyone can and notice anything supernatural, it has to be you, right? As Deku then said, correct. The two walked to Tokoyami's school, Aldera Junior High. The first person Deku met was indeed a strange one. She was a woman with sapphire blue eyes. Well, no, not sapphire blue eyes, jade green eyes. Her hair looked weird. Her clothes looked also weird, old. According to Tokoyami, the clo those clothes were outdated about a hundred years ago. Which Deku, obviously, then decided to see if this human and looking figure was undead. And was a dead. Or a non fleshling. As Deku, who then said, hmm, Tokoyami, the lady in the red with the green eyes is not you is not alive. As Tokoyami then said, Huh, I always figured out something was wrong with the, um, something was wrong with the therapist and with the uh, counselor. Her name is Penelope. Or and her name is Pen basically Penelope. Penelope Spectra, to be exact. We call him all her Mr. Miss Spectre, though, as a joke. However, I guess she really is a Spectre. As Deku would then say, indeed. As after class. Deku somehow got himself in the school by mind-controlling the principal and, the th and by manipulating the principal's mind into thinking he'd been there for like three months. After her classes, he went to the... and he had went to the, well, counselor's office. As... He had sensed the undead energy, or the presence, growing much stronger. As Deku then said, hmm, I wonder how long you're going to attempt to be in that human disc in that living disguise, huh? The woman then said, Gah, I don't know what you're talking about. As she was, as she was beginning to sweat. As Deku would then say, you cannot lie to me. It is clear you're a ghost. What kind, I do not know. As she then said, what are you, some sort of ghost hunter? How do you find me? As Deku would then say, what is a ghost hunter? She then said, well, that's obviously not the case. 
then you must be dead as well. What's your name? As Deku would then say, I am Deku. Most back in my age and back in my era, the entire realm of the dead, which I believe is now called the Ghost Zone, knew and praised my name. As she would, as Spectra would then say, huh, weird. Weird, I've never heard of you. Care to show me what you really look like? As Deku would then say, huh, you first. As Penelope then said, very well then. I'm very well then. As suddenly green and black clothing would begin to appear on her, as a ring of black flames would begin to scorch around her, suddenly rising up, transforming her from a human form into this. As she would then say, the name Spectra. Or, or you may call, or you can just call me, call me the strong, one of the strongest ghosts in the school, in this school. As Deku would then say, that is a lie. There's two other ghosts here. They're, they are near your power levels and strength. One weaker, one stronger. But I outrank all three of you. As Spectra would then say, <laughs> Then prove it. Show me your true form. As Deku would then say, All right. As his human form would then unfurl. And as his t hair would turn white. His eyes would become brighter, and his ancient Egyptian outfit would form. However, it was not the end. As then, a black shadowy, and a black and green, green and a black shadow, Ado would then start surrounding his body from the left, and a white, and, and a green lightning, would start surrounding his body from the right. As he would then say, I am not done either. This is merely my, a, I, I guess you could say, premature form. I am very old, of course, and a very strong ghost, but, well, being locked in a I'm being locked in a sarcophagus for what seems like an infinite amount of time can mess up your form and can mess up your physical form a bit, as Deku would then say. But here you go, as his hair would and as the shadows and lightning would disappear. His hair would start to grow longer, as suddenly a bl black and green ring, along with a black crown, would, would teleport in front of him, and would teleport attached to him. The black, and cr the black crown would then begin bursting with lightning, and would begin bursting with gr neon green flames, as the black ring would begin bursting with shadows. Shadows and dark matter. Until eventually it would evolve even further than that, revealing to look like this. As he would then say, Behold, I am Deku, the first of all ghosts, the creator of the realm um, of the ghost zone, the most powerful ghost ever and probably the most powerful being existent. Back, back when I was alive, I was called many things, a god, a 
deity, one above all. He who is above the stars and the sun. But you can just call me Lord or Master. Or simply Deku. Spectra would then say, Holy cow. Unholy cow. I have not felt that type of energy and have not seen that type of power, well, ever. <laughs> Holy cow. That is a lot of power. May I ask how you got it? As Deku would then say, simple. I was born. Born about at the age of, well, caveman. I was gifted far beyond any of them, however. As an example, whilst everyone else was grunting and making weird noises to try and communicate, I'd already invented 30 different complex languages, including ancient Sumari, Egyptian, feudal Japanese, draconic, demonic, angelic. I can go on. As Spectra would then say, no need. I already get the gist of it. So, in other words, you're pretty much a god? As he'd then say, yup. As she would then say, huh. Well. Oh, well, then? Why aren't you, I don't know, erasing me out of existence? As Deku then said, Well, it's clear that you're not. Well, it's clear that you're not against me, as you don't, didn't even know who I am. And I'm only against traitors and those who try anything against me. Such as Pariahs. As she would then say, did you say pariah? As he'd then say, I said pariahs. Who's pariah? As she would then say, pariah dark, the king of the ghost zone, or the realm of the dead as you call it. He, he wears a black crown, much I'm kind of like the one you wear, and a black and green ring kind of like the one you wear. As Deku then said, I created and hated those two items. They're extremely powerful. Pariah, or back when I was, a, or back when he betrayed me, Pariahs, sneaked on me and, and played dirty and stole the two items. Sealed me away for, yeesh, I don't even know how long. And, well, I recently just broke out. And here I am. As Spectra would then say, hmm. Well, then, I know not to mess with you. As Deku would then say, indeed. So... Tell me, what are you doing in the school of an I uh, high school for I'm in a junior high school for the living? And she would then say, Ah, yes. Well, you see, in order for my for myself to stay young and not poof, I need to feed feed on a little something called despair. Here. Or, well, disappointment, sadness, negativity. It has millions of different names. As Deku would then say, so, you're basically what you're saying. You're basically a race, do it from what you look like, who feeds on, neg on negative emotions. I should then say, exactly. As Deku would then say, hmm, well... I'll keep in touch. Later. As he would then morph back into his human form and walk out. 
and she would then say, huh, what a str- what a un- what a confusing, ingly, interesting turn of events. Perhaps my time in the human world won't, I mean, in the living world, won't be as boring as I thought. As we go to Deku, who is walking down the halls and senses another ghost. As he sees what could only be guessed as. Hold on. Oh god, did I? Okay, hold on. Sorry about that. Hold on. Sorry about that. As, well, let's continue this what if. Deku sees what could only be guessed as the popular girl walking in the middle of the hallway. Of course, he can obviously sense it. She ain't human. Clothes looking outdated. Hairstyle. Definitely a I mean, hairstyle. Definitely. Well, something new for Japan. And, um, well. Her accent is American, or at least ancient Egyptian, and well, <laughs> is, and well, her, um, <clears throat> hold on, sorry, as Deku would walk up to the popular girl and would say, excuse me, but I've happened to notice that you are not living. The girl, not trying to hide it, then says, Gah. Guess I should have, well, guess I, gah. guess I should have hid my aura from ghost hunters like you. Eh. As Deku would then say, what if, once again, what is a ghost hunter? She would then say, Oh. Then you must be a ghost. You're that or a half a. As Deku would then say, please. I I would never be an abomination. As she would then say, hmm. So you're full human disguise, I presume? As Deku would then say, yup, you. As she would then say, eh. Full. Much. I'm very old. I remember the age when the old king and when the old lord used to walk around. The one and the lord of the blacks and the pharaoh of the black sands is what we called him. And then he died. And even in the realm of the ghosts, and even when he, in the realm of the dead, we cheered and chanted, and then he was sealed away. Gah, what an annoyance. You probably don't know what I'm talking about as you're, well, you look like a new ghost. As Deck would then say, actually, you'd be surprised as he then turn into his true form. As he then say, I know exactly who you're talking about. In fact, you're looking right at him. As she would then say, Lord Deku, it's been so long, long since I've seen you. As Deku would then say, let me guess, desiring. As she would then say, of course, my lord. <laughs> As you can see, I still have the I still have my lamp around. It's just in my bag. It's just in my human book bag. As Deku would then say, "Ah, very nice." As he would then say, "So, who's the third ghost here?" As she would then say. Oh, that would be another newling. 
Ember McLean. She's around maybe 150 years old. Ugh. She does take an interest. I mean, she, most of her powers and her interest is that one thing you did invent, though. The thing which the um, Christians, such as Pyrus, said was made from the depths of hell. As Deku would then say, you mean rock? And she would then say, yup. It actually caught on and a billion p and, well, the entire planet basically fell and a lot of people, basically one-seventh of the planet fell in love, love with it. And they, well, it's now a very popular type of music. Ember McLean's the ghost's name. Hey, my lord, she's actually, um, in the, um, how do I explain? Ah, uh, yes, she is in the, she is in the, um, oh yeah, music like room as we're speaking, as Deku would then say. Very good, Desiree. I'll see you later. As he would then teleport away. Deku would then walk to the music room and would say, You must be... You must be McLean, right? As she would then say, The name's Ember McLean. When you say my name, please, you say Ember. As Deku would then say, Hmm. If I had to guess, I'm guessing you're a ghost which feeds off of the amount of, which gains more power the amount of times people say their name, say your name. For example, you don't even, I mean, you don't even hide what you are, as everyone assumes you're some sort of rock star with a whole bunch of special effects and makeup. As she then said, very clever ghost hunter. As Deku would then say, seriously, what is a ghost hunter? As she would then say, never mind. So are you a Hatha or? Deku would then say, like I said, I'm not an abomination. I'd never be an abomination. I am a fool. As she would then say, ah, makes sense. Well, hmm. show me your true form. You already see me in mine. As Deku would then say, very well. As he would then morph into his true form. As he would then say, I am Deku, the first ghost, creator of the ghost of the realm of the dead, now called the Ghost Zone. I am the forger of the Ring of Rage in the Crown of Fire. The first and original King of Ghosts, Lord of all ghosts. And, yeah, you get the gist of it. As she would then say, ah. So you're also a big shot. Makes sense why you know not to, s not to say my name. As Decker would then say, let me guess. You play shows for humans, make them basically fall in love with your music and say your name. I'm guessing you even have a couple of songs called, I'm mean, with your name in them, in, in the title. And let me guess. The more times people, people being these mindless, brainless teenagers, chant your name, the more freaking powerful you get. I shouldn't say. I mean, yeah, that's basically the gist of it. As Jackie would then say, ah, that's very nice. Nice power. You know, if you were to have, I don't know, an entire universe of people, Say your name, you might even be able to beat me in a fight. Also, 
you actually like my invention. I thought it would just be a fad that no one would like. As you would then say, what invention? As Decker would then say, rock and roll, of course. You ever hear an old classic called The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Sent it through the future and gave the lyrics to some sort of, to some sort of, well, and to some sort of, um, sorry, not Devil Down, Went Down to Georgia. God, I'm an idiot. Ah, yeah, through the fire and the flames. I send it through the future, and eh, I send the lyrics through the future, and I'm pretty sure some sort of human band picked up on them. What are they called? As Ember would then say, through the fire and the flames by Dragon Force. As Deku would then say, ah, yep, through the fire and the flames is mine. I song made all by me, gave the lyrics and talent to the writers because obviously I wanted to preserve my music. But let me tell you, back in my age, I used to play that baby all night long. When the Egyptian sun set to the, and when the Egyptian sun rise to the Egyptian sun set to the Egyptian sun rise. As she would then say, huh. So, you mind teaching me a couple things? <sighs> Hold on. Sorry about that. As Deku would then say, sure. I don't mind giving a couple of pointers to a newbie. As she would then say, newbie? I've been playing for over 150 years. As Deku said. And, due to the time distortion in the ghost zone... I've been playing for or longer than you have, than even your thought. So, yeah. I win. As Deku would then summon a green and black guitar out of nowhere. As he would begin shredding on it like she'd never seen. As Deku would then say, that is lesson one. How to properly shred. As Deku would then say, Welp, see ya. As he'd then disappear. Ember would just say, Wow. I have a long way to go. If I want to be the best. As we go to Deku, who is walking outside of the school. As he then sees what could only be guessed as a wolf as a woman with three halos and with a weird shaped halo with eyes on it, wings with eyes on them, and a wolf head and tail. As Deku would then say, who are you? As she would then say, ah, I am an archangel. You? They call me Gabriel. I'm, I am Gabriel. L, the, well, mistress of heaven. One of the two strongest archangels. I'm one of the strongest archangels. Brother of Michael and Lucifer. I'm sister of Michael and Lucifer. As Deku would then say, ah. So you're a... I don't know. You're one of the jerks who, I don't know, somehow got pariahs and like fifth, fifth, and like 5,000 other Christian dudes in the ghost zone and had them rally over me and try to kill me. I should then say that wasn't me, that was Michael. He saw you as a threat to God. And then, as Deku would then say, well, meh. I'm basically over that now. As he then said, so, what, what are you here for? As she would then say, 
Eh, sensed an extremely large amount of energy beyond the Earth and wanted to check it out. As Deku would then say, uh, makes sense, as he'd then walk away. But while he walked away, he did not notice Gabriel grinning sinisterly, as she'd then say. <laughs> So, Senpai is on Earth, free from his prison imprisonment, and <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> As she would then and disappear in a flash of red lightning, of red and white light. And that's where I'm ending this part off. I hope you all have enjoyed part one of What If Deku Was the King of Ghosts. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Goodbye, and I'll see you all later. Skadoosh.